guys, welcome to the September challenge in Nate's Art Lab collab. We are a group of his Patreons and he challenges us every month. So if you've been watching the others in the collab before me, you know that the challenge was either a waterfall pour or an angel wing pour. Now I opted for the angel wing and depending on how you pour this technique, you can have something so minimalistic and simple and delicate and dainty, but yet it can hold so much interest to the eye. And that was what I was going for in this piece. Well, that and trying to not tilt it off the canvas because that truly is the challenge with this technique. So I'm keeping it simple, only four colors blue, red, gold, and white. And I have learned that this is pretty much a never fail color palette. Um, I learned it from Kathleen Osmore and it just seems that no matter what technique you use those four colors in, it always turns out really, really phenomenal. So that's why I went with those colors. I'm using a black base coat and I'm going to elevate the canvas here and then spread the paint out with a plastic drywall knife. Now the reason for this is the amount of paint left on your canvas before you start actually pouring your colors is very, very important. And it's vital that you get as much of that base coat off as you possibly can. Now when I start pouring, I'm going to point this out um, and show you why it's so important to get that paint off. Like I said before, the trick is tilting very, very carefully so that your composition does not go off the canvas. Um, now some people when they're doing their angel wing pour, uh, it does go off the canvas on one end. However, I did not want to tilt any of my composition off here. So that is why I am, like I said, trying to get as much off as I can. And it's at this point that I'm going to do what I call a hard tilt. Now you see all that paint grouping together and flowing off. That's how much paint was still left on even though I smoothed it out. So again, when you're doing this technique, make sure you get off as much of your base coat as you possibly can. Now, some people use a split cup when they pour this out. Um, I prefer to do it this way. I use a regular cup. I get a piece of cardboard and I cut it to fit inside the cup to create a separator. Um, this was something I learned from Olga Sobe years ago um, and it works really well. So on one side of the cup, you pour your base coat and on the other, you layer your colors. Now remember, this is the same as any other cup pour. The first color in is going to be your last color out. So I layered it from the bottom, blue, red, gold, and white. As you just saw, I turned the cup with the base coat half all the way towards the canvas. And that is what I start pouring first. That way your base coat color stays in the center and your colors as they come out of the cup drape over your base coat uh, to form this beautiful composition um, on each side of your base coat. Now you want to stay pretty close to the canvas, as close as you can, and you want to pour it slowly. Now, some people will go back and forth um, in a back and forth motion when they're pouring, and that creates really cool, uh, bigger fingerlings. I did not do that um, on this piece, and that arrow right there was to show you how far down I had gotten in my pouring. You wanna stay as close to the top 
as you can of your canvas. So you can see I'm slowly moving back up there. Um, it's really hard because you get kind of me mesmerized uh, by this pour. And you can see the arrow right there. See how that black base coat is kind of pooling up as the colors uh, run down. We're gonna talk about that here in just a little bit when we go to tilt, um, but I'll let you watch the rest of the pour. This is all done in real time. It's right about here that you're going to want to start watching that black lip over on the end of the canvas, watching how close it gets to the edge. Um, you don't want your composition to go down, you know, so far that it goes off the canvas. So that's why you're watching your base coat to see how close it gets. When you take your canvas off of the cup, make sure you tilt it in the opposite direction from which you were just pouring. Um, that way it kind of stops the momentum of the paint from going in that direction. Now comes the fun part of tilting. I am also going to leave this in real time because this is very methodical and detail oriented. Um, if you want to get the effect that you're looking for. So remember I told you about that, that lip that you see of your black base coat? That is what you're going to be watching. Don't watch the edges of your composition. Watch that lip of the black base coat because the closer it gets to the edge, you do want to get some of it off, but you don't want to go too far so that it pulls your composition paint off as well. It's a fine line, guys. It is not easy. It takes a lot of practice. This is not a technique for someone that is impatient and that likes to just kind of tilt willy-nilly. Um, you really have to pay attention to where the weight of your paint is so that you can tilt the areas that you want to tilt. Um, again, it's a very slow, methodical process. Um, but with enough practice, you can do it. Anybody can do it, but you've just got to be patient. Typically on this technique, people generally don't want cells. So let's talk a little bit about the pouring medium that I used. Um, it was 70% Floetrol and 30% Creative Inspirations Polymer Gloss Medium and Varnish. You can get this at Jerry's Artorama. Um, Molly from Molly's Artistry uses it all the time. And what it does is it, it just kind of simmers down your paints. Um, it, it really doesn't allow for any cells to be created unless you swipe over it um, with Cell Activator. So that's what I used here and it just, it really gave it a great consistency. Um, so I used about one part paint to three parts, give or take a little bit, of the pouring medium, 70% Floetrol, 30% varnished medium. 
Now, when I first mixed my paints, I put in a good squirt of GAC 800. I like to bind my paints with the GAC. It just, they seem to behave better when I do that. Um, so that's what I did. And the recipe will be in the description if uh, you wanna copy it and use it in the future. And that is all I'm willing to tilt, guys. I am loving it. Now, since we weren't able to tilt off the composition, there's gonna be a little too much base coat left on the canvas, which is why I am going around and smoothing it out, removing the excess um, so that everything is nice and even. Miss Center of Attention and this one is just trying to escape per usual and here is the piece dried I had to resin it it was just screaming for resin so I did and it's beautiful I am so so happy with this piece sparkle from that gold and the turquoise just just gorgeous so happy with this piece um, this is actually the first real angel wing pour I have ever done that I did not tilt it over the sides so I am pretty proud of myself thank you Nate for challenging us love 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 doing these challenges and there is my spicy girl Thank you guys for being here. Be sure and check out the playlist to see who's coming up next. In the meantime, have a fabulous weekend. We'll talk soon.